Street of Fest 2019. Everybody is worn down, we're fucking tired and all that shit. But we got one more special thing to have here, which is Marduk with Mr. Morgan. Nice to have you here. You just did a fantastic Badger Division Marduk show plus then some. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a one wild show with all the 30 minutes, almost 30 yeah. minutes of Panzer Division Martyr. With new drummer 25. With new Martyr. Yeah, I, I, I know this new drummer, which was like some someone on speed or whatever. Yeah. And then you had some uh, kind of older material as well. So yeah, we tried to mix in some stuff since we had 75 minutes to get everything. Uh, as we were specific to do the past set today, which is the only time we do it this year. Mm -hmm. And maybe the last time ever, in case we don't decide to do it next year or whatever. So. And then we try to get something from more or less every album, get a good combination of songs from what it's all about. You've been kind of a frequent visitors to Finland as well. Yeah. You were here like last year yeah. also, yeah. and you did special things also. So how do you prepare for such a special anniversary gig, so to speak? We rehearse a little bit and then we just focus on capturing the moment. Because uh, for this time, for example, when we, as we, we already put this one and we didn't rehearse before we went on tour and we had a new drummer, so we just had very few selected rehearsals during sound checks during the last tour because during the past I set with a new drummer. But he was probably more well prepared than we were, so it was a very smooth journey. You need to tell all about the new drummer. How yeah. did he come about? How did you find him? And how can you. Uh, so-called seize the moment with this new blood. The thing is that uh, when Frederick Jerome had told us that he was looking to do something completely different in life and asked us what we thought about it, I said, do whatever you want to do, it's your life. And he wanted to continue because he has a strong um, education as an architect and that's what his he, heart and soul really is. So he said like half a year before he went out that that was what he wanted to do. So he said, fine, you know, we continue to do what we did. And he was the one who even said that the new drummer you should get is Simon. So we said, we listened to him and I think he really were a competent drummer. So we contacted him, we spoke a lot and we saw that we shared a lot of devotion and ideas. So it became a very natural thing and it worked very smooth. And we actually never rehearsed together. We, he just rehearsed on his own. We on our own and then we met up in, in Russia and we did four shows with him. That was the warm up for the European tour. He's very dedicated, focused, hard-hitting, stable drummer. Aren't you ever worried about like how the chemistry goes or are you like just we are a band, we need to go through this yeah, stuff? In, in a way, because you, you should take your time with members, but uh, we met up in before he joined us, we had a, a long, great discussion and then he just went back home and rehearsed and we met up and did it. So that already proved it to me, he's very well focused, dedicated, strong. You know, that's the way we like it. You've been here almost 30 years, creating this wonderful Swedish black metal. You're actually the one of the founders of Battery, that is. Yeah. You created this whole uh, Swedish black metal sound. Did it ever occur to you that someday one of your members might be like, hey, I'm gonna be an architect and I was just gonna to yeah. out with my career, were you uh, expecting people to kind of uh, yes. leave the boat? Because we have had so many members change over the years, but it's natural. I mean, nothing lasts forever. I mean, some bands do, but a lot of bands don't. I mean, and I think it's natural because we're a band that tours a lot. We're, we work very hard and we, we're devoted to what we do and I believe in what I do, which I find the most important thing. Whatever you do in life is to believe in what you do, otherwise you shouldn't do it. Whatever you do. So therefore I liked that a drummer told me that he would like to focus on the architecture thing and I said fine. And same with other members who have come and gone. I mean everybody's focused on different things. I'm focused on this band. This is my life. So therefore we had a lot of changes, but that's what you need to keep a focus and because we have done over the years we've been around and probably done like fifteen, six hundred shows, we've done fourteen albums and we toured a lot and we believe in the idea of reaching as many territories as possible. So and everybody's not into it. Somebody thinks they are, but over the years they you go in different directions. It's like a marriage. <laughs> One would even say that you're pretty much like the black metal version or equivalent of like cannibal corpses to death metal. Yeah. You have plenty of albums you've been doing there like 30 years, and yeah. they can stop you 
but you've had your obstacles. What keeps you going year after year, album after album and all that stuff? As I said, we're very focused and we believe in what we do. And I mean, I believe in the albums we have done, we, I think we, what should I say? At least for us, we're stepping across new boundaries, we're doing what we believe in and we sing about things that we found interesting, fascinating and believe in whatever it is. So we create soundtracks to a lot of historical happenings and I like it. Well, people have taken these historical events, yeah. as you know, yeah. into the political environment, yeah. which has never been the case. No. What is your response? Because everybody who is, well, let's put it this way, everybody who understands a little bit yeah. of they get it. <laughs> they they get understand. It. You're not political, but a lot of people don't get it for that. And I find that amusing. Yeah. Because in a way, I like problems. I love mm -hmm. problems. Because you life, like solving them or you yeah, just like the challenges. Because life is about overcoming problems. Because we all get it. And I will never back down for people who said, oh, but you can't do this, you can't do that. You can sing about killing Christians and about raping them and doing whatever. But as soon as you sing about, for example, a theme related to World War II, in a way it happens like, oh, you stepped over the line. Well, it's not my fucking line, so fuck off. I don't care. We will always do what we believe in and I don't give a shit about what people talk about. I never read, I don't care. And for me, it's about only overcoming the idiots. So are you worried about this kind of so-called political uh, correctness or safe space or whatever or, or is there... No, I'm not worried because problem would come and if it's a big problem, it will be a big problem. We might have to cancel shit here and there, I don't give a shit because I will never let anybody tell me, oh, it's okay to do this, it's okay to do that. We've never been a band who adjusts to what people think, we do what we believe in. That's the most important thing, I will never let anybody tell me what to do. What about if people can take history as it is, it's their problem. Exactly. Yeah. But what about the people? Like I saw a few, yeah. only a few hands though, but I saw these few hands, you know, doing the well let's call it let's not name it here, but yeah. kind of a German yeah. like, waving the yeah. hand in a certain yeah. way. It happens once in a while. But it's not my problem because we have an audience all over the world. I mean, we probably have a lot of communists and a lot of rights political people, but I don't give a shit if they like our music, it's fine. I'm not here to judge people. I'm probably a bigger Democrat than everybody else is because I don't care. As long as people appreciate what we do, it's fine with me. I'm not here to judge people. I believe that everybody has the freedom to believe in what they do. So you basically believe in freedom of speech and everything? More than anybody else, I think. Even though you always uh, get uh, which are demonized as uh, this and that, but I mean, I don't care. People can believe in what they want, I don't care. So this because I can still believe in what I do. I don't need that everybody that I know or meet need to share my views. It's not the thing, it's not the way it is in the world. People have different views and I have no problem with it. I meet people that every political agenda, it's up to them. I don't judge them. It's their, it's their life, it's their beliefs. But Marduk has kind of a change throughout the years when we're talking about yeah. the uh, lyrical themes. Yeah. Like, Early days were more about kind of darkness and sin, and then you move towards war and yeah. all that stuff. But you still uh, have a connection to that thing you spoke about as well. Yeah. But it's just done in a different way because we all get older, we look about things in a different way. But you still, if you just need to grasp the lyrics and read it, you will see that it's not really changed. But how do you feel these older lyrics now that you have more experience and age and all that stuff? I don't mean like in the yeah, but, but I know what you mean because when I go back and I, I look upon old albums, which you do once in a while, I'm going to rehearse old songs and things like that. And sometimes it surprises me because the lyrics, when I read them now, they mean even more to me than they did back then because they speak to me in a different way. And I see understandings that I didn't see back then. And it's just like it's a repeatable thing in a way. So they keep developing and they speak to me in a different way. And I'm very proud of all the albums we have done because it's the pillars which we stand upon as a band. So that brings me to the next yeah. question, which is always kind of dangerous or at least annoying. Yeah. Everybody has their own favorite albums. Yeah. As you have created more than yeah. a dozen of our albums, yeah. Which one? Which one would be your favorite kid? Every artist would always tell you the latest album they done, which is the same thing here because it's so fresh in mind. But when I go back and listen to albums, when we're rehearsing songs for coming tours and stuff like that, I see specific things in all the albums we have done. Even though if I would 
go back and listen to them and say, hmm, we maybe we should have done like this or that. Still, I wouldn't want to change it because they all speak to me in a different way. And I appreciate them in a different way and they keep coming back to me in a different way. So they are all magic in their own way. So I think that all the albums we have done are specific pillars which we stand upon as a band and all the lyrics and everything, even though I see productions that I would have wanted to change, is still a reflection of the time period for the time being. So I wouldn't want to change it because it's a reflection when you were 20 years old and now you're like a bit older. So, but I mean, they all speak to me in a different way and I'm proud of, of them all. I wouldn't want to change anything because it's just a reflection of a certain time period. You have one big change that I think many yeah. old Nordic fans still see as a kind of turning point. It's when you had this big change of a, a vocalist. Yeah. And now Mortis has been there like a long, I mean, a long, big amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. But still, some people are like seeing it's like the fresh face of yeah. the band. So How do you say to this audience, like, like, get over it, or you have to get over it? Otherwise, I mean, I can appreciate, I think that's one of the strengths of us as a band that every people I meet, they always have a different favorite album. Mm -hmm. And that can, it's a big variety because everybody, some people love those that I like, some love Opus Nocturne, some love Panzer, some love whatever words you want. And, and I think that's just a strength of the band that everybody loves a different album. But I mean, things change. I mean, for example, if, when Iron Maiden changed from Paul Diano to Bruce Dickinson, it was a big change. Same for us, and I mean, we changed before. Mm -hmm. When Joachim quit and we got mm -hmm. Legion, it was a big change as well. But what can you do? People change, you can't keep it in a band. I mean, things change. And we're a band that's very dedicated. We work very hard, and some people don't want to do it. I, I, I understand that some people want to have a certain lineup. Sure, I, I like a lot of bands, and I would love the Purple with Richard Blackmore. Exactly. It will not happen. Because things change, you grow apart, and even if they would come back now, it wouldn't be the same. Things change. That's the way it is. That's life. Do you still keep, like, in contact, like, are you close friends with the old members, or is it just a gun? Close friends? I don't know, but I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, mean, I still meet a lot of people. I mean, for example, our first vocalist, Andreas Axelsson, I still meet him. I mean, Joachim, who sang and played drums in the past, I meet him. And our old bass player, B. War, I still have good contacts, and I mean, I mean, a lot of them over the years, but things change, they do different things that you wouldn't believe today because we were so working so hard together and they go out from the circle, they do different things. It's strange to see people that do different things because we've been so focused on what we do. But so that's it. Looking at the, uh, in, in hindsight, back when you were like young and nine, you know, it was 90s or the 90s and you were basically... When you were young. <laughs> yeah, when you were young, yeah. you're not young anymore. I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that, sorry man. Yeah. But I mean, back in the 90s, when yeah. you were kind of like defining the whole second wave of yeah. black metal, you know, you were one of the first bands to kind of create this new sound after the you know, first yeah. round, metal, 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 whatever. Did you ever occur that you might be the kind of leader, you might be the sergeant of like, hey, we are gonna take care of this Swedish black metal. I don't think we else really follow. cared about because, I mean, you have to put it in perspective, it's, it's a bizarre thing because, for example, we look upon black metal, if you speak about second wave or whatever you want to call it, I mean, I remember back in very early 90s, it was like a few selected bands in Norway, few selected in Sweden, you had a few in Greece and more, and a few in South Latin America, mm -hmm. that was it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you more or less knew all the bands. Except and then they basically come with you. And that thing exploded and it's hard to comprehend and it's tragic in a way because so much shit got carried forth, but I mean, I, I don't really care about it. I care about those bands that I really think bring forth something special, and that's mostly the bands that were around at that time. When, when considering about this, like, 90s black man, yeah. it was the Norwegians who got so much attention because of church burnings yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. But then again, many of those bands also kind of failed to continue, whereas you just kept going with your train. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of bands got called in the matrix thing with this plastic fuck up things, but I mean, when I look upon Norway and Sweden, for example, I still think that those bands that I keep in highest esteem is the bands that I knew back in the early 90s, and I don't really care what happened afterwards. 
Have you ever regretted choosing the name Mark? I mean, that's putting also in the perspective. It's very interesting because it's a, it's a, it's a good God. Exactly. Point. That's, what, that's, that's what, 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 I, that's what I love about it because it brings a lot of confusion because people are so stupid. So for me, it's a fantastic name. So basically, you killed Tiamat. Yeah. But Tiamat is also a Swedish man. Yeah, I know. That was a bit of the amusement of the name back in the day. Did, did you ever make a, like a humor thing about like, okay, they went to Gothic, but then again, you killed it because you were the black man? Nah, not really. All right, how do you feel uh, the whole black male genre, you know, now talking about 2019 versus how it was in two past or three past decades? How have things changed in your perspective? I mean, it changed a lot. I mean, things exploded. If I look back on the early 90s when we did our first album, I wouldn't expect it to be in stores and everything exploded. It was in every store. Everything grew up. But now it's going back to the underground thing in a way that that's fine with me. And I, it's hard for me to compare with other bands. I don't really think about it. I mean, we always focus on what we are doing. That's what we believe in. And the people that we connect with very strongly, that's the inner circle within us. But I, then what the, everybody else is doing, I could care less because I can only get depressed. What about these different kind of waves or styles within black metal? Yeah. There are more or less religious black metal than there is like secular black metal. For, for me, it's like NSBM yeah, and all that stuff. So how do you position for me, yourself? For me, black metal has always been a really religious thing. Otherwise, it wouldn't be black metal. But then all these post this and this that and this that. I don't give a shit. People can call whatever they do. I don't give a shit. So for me, it's a sacred thing, and I care about the people that I appreciate and those who I think really understand the meaning of it. And the rest, it's not a part of my thinking. So I don't, they don't exist within my world because I get too tired to think about all that crap. You said that it's a religious thing. Yeah. So what kind of religion we're talking about when we're talking about religious black metal in your world? Yeah, can, can you take a thing? What do you think? I'm asking, like, yeah. are you more of a... Because some people, when they're talking about Satan, yeah. some people think it more like figuratively, and some people believe it's like an actual being, like yeah. something like, like opposite of God. Yeah. And some have even more kind of a, you know, uh, how to say, occult perspective. It's kind of a kind of cruel one thing or something that is not comprehensible. No. So. How I would think, you define? I think we have done so many albums. If people would just take and sit down and listen to it, check lyrics, they cannot make up really the mind and see what we're all about as a band. It's not that hard to comprehend. Do you need the, all your members to agree with your view fully? No. I used to think in those terms, but today, as long as people you share a certain part of beliefs, it's fine. But of course, I don't believe in you share all because all of us is different. So. No. What about these themes? Black metal has always been very anti-religious, especially against Christianity, but also against uh, Islam and yeah. other major religions. How do you stand in that field of being a re religious man? I think it's very easy, as I said just right before. Read lyrics, make your own understanding, and you will really see it. If people just would take the time to make up their mind and see what it's all about. Now, this is also another annoying yeah. question because yeah. so many people uh, interpret, you know, Bible as yeah. well as Quran and other religious writings in different way. Could it be possible that people could just, you know, read your lyrics in a wrong way yeah. and totally get the yeah, wrong absolutely. understanding yeah, about it? Is there a problem? It's just like reading any book. You can make up your own mind and some people will never understand it. And people will interpret it and misunderstand. And I don't mind. It's up to people to see it. So are you... That's the, that's the beauty of music and art. Same with a lot of Baroque paintings, whatever. It's a, you know, it's, everything is there, it's just you have to see it. So you shouldn't have to explain everything in music or art. Tell them like, oh, it's about this, it's about that. You should, when you look at a Baroque painting, you will have to understand and see the meaning of it and try mm -hmm. to interpret it yourself. Same with music. Which comes first, lyrics or music? 50-50. 50-50. Because I know so many bands that don't do it the way. They do an album and then they just try to fit in some lyrics, which is rather tragic. But I mean, for us, it's about, it's 50-50 because you work on music, you work on lyrics. We do it both ways and then we try to brainstorm and see what works together because 
they each need to reflect each other to get the full power. Because I believe that the lyric is as important as the music. Because if they should be hard hitting, forcing your face, they need to be working together. What about that's where I see a lot of bands failing? What about streaming services then? Because they don't provide lyrics, they would actually require that people to yeah. kind of Google it up yeah. or whatever, and, and people who are reluctant to buy the actual yeah. physical releases, how would this serve for a Marduk fan? I don't know. I don't care about digital and downloading and People can do whatever they want, things change, I don't care, we'll adjust, we'll, we'll manage it. I still think that the people who really, who are in connection with us, they're still the people who buy vinyls, CDs, whatever, because if you have 10 albums, 12 with a band, you still want to have the new one, you want it, because the same with the band that I like, whatever it is, I want to buy the album, I want to open it up, I want to see the band's meaning behind the lyrics and music and get the full power of it. But that's also a thing because a lot of bands these days don't really care. They have the label do the layout, they just like release it. For us, it's, we do everything ourselves. We don't just give it away to somebody. I mean, we do the layout, we do music, we produce it, we record it in a studio owned by our base, and we do everything ourselves. Because we don't see, say we don't use a producer because we have done the music, we have done the lyrics, we know what we're singing about, we know the feeling we want to bring forth. So we do everything ourselves because we don't need anybody to tell us what to do. That would be nonsense to us. We don't need anybody coming to tell us, well guys, you have to sound like this. We have a full picture in our mind. Nobody can tell us better than ourselves because we've done it. We know the music, we know the lyrics, we know the story, we know the story behind it, behind it and we know how to make it. So we don't need, we don't need anybody. So we just need a label to put it out for us. So since you're so self-sustaining bad and you know, handling all yeah. basically all the streams within your hands, how do you manage, because you don't have quite a big label, how do you manage to keep it going? Do they have some demands like, I know you're a big band, but... No, we have full artistic freedom to do what they want, otherwise we would never do it. We still have our, our own label, Blood of Productions, which we license through different labels, right now through Central Media. They would never interfere with what we do because they know how we work. That was the point from when we signed to them, because we're a really self-moving band, we know what we believe in, we know what we do, and they, they knew as well, so they would never interfere with what we do. Oh. Because we have a full vision, I mean, I heard a lot of stories from them as well about bands who don't know what to use on album covers and they don't know what to do with the lyrics. For me that's really lame because we do it full out. I mean, we do music, lyrics, and we work on it to, to create a certain... Because they each need to reflect each other, so... I don't know how other bands work and I don't really care, but for us it's very important that we, we deliver the full thing and... If anybody has a problem with it, I would rather go to another label. We don't change anything for anybody. We've never done that. That's not the way we work. Is there anything you could do more with Martin? Is there a place you need still to conquer? Yes, of course. <laughs> I mean... Are there any dreams that still need to be fulfilled? I don't know about dreams, but I mean, I don't sit down and think about dreams. For me, it's about things you're going to do. We try to make them happen. It's not a dream, it's a vision and we try to do it. I mean. As a band, I mean, it's just like the last year that I've really been sitting down and thinking how many years we've been around. And uh, I see so many bands celebrating, you know, 25, 30 years, and you see, yeah, but you were split up for 15 years as well. But they, oh, then they celebrate things. I mean, we've been around for some 30 years. We've been touring all the time. We've been doing what we believe in. We've been pushing limits. And the thing that makes me proud is that we reach so many areas of this world. I think we were one of the first black metal bands to really tour. South America, and uh, I think we conquered a lot of areas in this world, and that's what we keep on doing because this is what we believe. So when will you quit? And why? Can't say. Could be tomorrow. Could be in twenty years. I don't know. Life change. I mean, things are different. Than, but right now, I feel very focused and confident, and I still see a lot of things that I really want to do, music and touring wise. So. So, what is the next step regarding an album, what we can ex uh, expect after Victoria? We, we really haven't got to rehearse because we've been touring a lot. We, I don't know how many shows we've done, but I mean, we're going to continue. We have a few areas still to cover before we go back to the next album, but uh, of course we have a lot of ideas. As I said before, we did a Victoria album, we 
had three different themes. We had this uh, Victoria theme. We had a, quite another historical theme with Minerva Lille. We had a rather religious, if you want to call it, black metal theme as well. So we went for the Victoria theme and we had two themes still growing around. We were working constantly on things, so we just have to see where it will take us. It's, we haven't decided yet. We will just keep on touring for this album and we will see where it will take us. Since you need to pass the torch eventually yeah. to the new generation, yeah. what would be your advice? Where should bands take, like, okay, Marduk is now done, I'm done, I'm gonna retire, yeah. you take the torch and... I don't see us doing that. You're just gonna like, fuck off, everybody... Until I see some who could take care of the torch, but I don't see it right now, so we just have to keep on doing it. Any last words for the wise? I can't think of anything. Thank you for all these nice words of wisdom and enlightening about the band. My pleasure, sir. Now, everybody by now should be aware of the band Cobalt Marduk, and unless you haven't done it, you're too late for the train. Yeah. Go do something else, play Tetris, or oh. I don't know, go figure out something else. But Why if then again, if you're all about Diggy Marduk, go deep with the lyrics. Figure out yourself, and if you still have something to figure out even That's more, the way it is. Because go even if you read a book or whatever, show, you have to find out for yourself. Everything should be pronounced. I mean, people, what, what is this about? What is this? People would have to read it and make their own understanding. It's very open, but still not. But I mean, use your mind. These are words the wise. Use your mind.